In this video, we're going to have a look at creating some walls and laying them out on our building. So what we're going to do first of all is look to our project browser in the bottom left hand corner and we're going to go to our ground floor plan by clicking on that. Then in the architecture tab, we're going to click the wall command and I'm just going to do wall architectural. We've got here then our options bar. So we've got the height of the wall and I'm going to make it up to the roof level. The location line. So the location line is where the cursor clicks on the screen, the position of the wall in relation to that cursor. So center line would be the wall is centered on the cursor. I'm going to do finish face exterior because I'm going to work on the basis that I know the outside dimensions of my building. The chain command option enables you to um, click with the walls, positioning them from one to the next. Instead of creating just one wall and then you have to sort of click again and again to get the next wall, you can just do it in one sort of run. So it's a little bit faster as long as you are doing the walls as a run. So I'm going to keep the chain command ticked. I don't want an offset or a radius on this one because I'm just doing fairly basic straight walls. Now, the next thing to do would be to look in the type selector and pick a wall type that is similar to what you want. Now, you may well use a wall construction that is identical to one of the standard ones in Revit. You will notice that the walls tend to have little descriptions with them. So wall, EXT, exterior. OK, then you've got the materials. So, for example, 102 BWK is 102 millimetres of brickwork, 75 insulation, 100 block work and 12 mil plaster. If you scroll down, we can see that you've got some partition walls and other types of wall as well. For now, I'm going to click on this wall here. And what I'm going to do is show you how to create your own form of wall construction. So I'm going to click the edit type button. We can see the wall I've selected is by there. I'm now going to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename it. I'm going to beef up the insulation to 100 millimeters. So I'm just going to put that in the name. And I'm also going to give it a air cavity of 50 mil as well. So I'm just going to write that in the name so that I know it's there. And I don't need the number two on the end. So do that. Click OK. And now I'm going to go into the structure by here. Click the edit button. And I will now edit the structure of this wall to match what it is I want. So the first row, if I click on the number one by here, as is, it's already highlighted in black. You can insert, delete and move up and down the rows. So just to show you, look, I could move the brickwork down a row, but I want it to stay on the outside. Then I've got number two, a thermal air layer is the function. And it's got fiberglass for the material, 75 mil thick. So I'm going to insert a layer by here. Now, this is going to be our air layer. So I click on the function and put air layer and click on by category for the material. And I'm going to select air. You can type in the name of the material by here and it'll find it for you. We can also create our own materials, which is something we will do in another video. So I'm just going to click on air, click OK and put 50 millimeters by there. And then I'm going to change the thickness of our insulation to 100 millimeters. Oops, not 1000, 100. The core boundaries are invisible layers that the computer program uses 
to identify um, the sort of structural element of this wall. Now, we've got the core boundaries set either side of the inner skin of block work, which is what we want it to be in this example. That means when we create a roof, for example, we can get it to sit on that inner skin of block work and not on another part of the building. We have then our internal plaster finish. So I'm happy with that construction now. I'm going to click OK. And then I will click OK again. So now I'm ready to start drawing. It would be a good idea to have an idea of what the size of your building is going to be. Um, our cameras are positioned by here at the moment. The building I'm going to draw is probably going to be bigger than the cameras. So I'm going to start by here. And now as you move the cursor, you can see I'm not holding the mouse button. I've just done a single click. I'm pointing over here and you can see how long it is and where it is. If I was to click the mouse, it would then put the wall in by there. For this building, I'm going to do a building that is um, 40 meters long. So I could move the cursor until I get the correct dimension or the other option is just to point and then type in on the keyboard your dimension. So this is in millimeters, 40,000 for 40 meters and press enter. And then point straight down and I'm going to do this one, uh, 25,000, so that's 25 meters and back across the 40 and back up there. And then I'm going to press escape twice to get out of that command. So what you will notice here, if I just zoom in, is that we now have the hatching of the brickwork on the outside, the blockwork on the inside. If I had done that in anti-clockwise direction, the walls would be the wrong way round, which we don't want. So if you click on a wall, though, you can press the blue arrows by there and it will swap which way round the wall is. So if you have made that mistake, you can correct it. I'm going to move these cameras to the outside of the building. So remember, when moving a camera, draw a box around it, then grab it and move it. To check what the visibility of a camera is, point at the little black arrow, click on it, and you can see where the elevation starts and finishes. So that's what it can see standing here looking that direction. So there we have created the external walls of our building. Let's have a little look at what this looks like on our 3D view. So in the project browser, I'm just going to open up the 3D views and double click on 3D. And here is that 3D view. Now, to move the cursor around like this, what you need to do is press and hold the shift key on the keyboard and press and hold the scroll button on the mouse at the same time. And you can spin around in 3D looking at whichever angle you want. OK. So that has created our external walls of the building.